Hello boys and girls. At this point you should have watched my video introing legends um, and their characteristics and you should have also watched the video of me reading aloud the story of Jumping Mouse by John Steptoe. So if you have not already please pause this video and go to those videos first before we go into this discussion where we are discovering characteristics in legends. So now we're focusing on the story of Jumping Mouse which is the story that you've read or listened to I should say today. So Again, just to review, what is a legend? A legend is a folktale that usually has some connection to a real person, event, or thing. It contains many elements that are similar to myths and fables, and we're specifically going to look at creation legends, which show how something in the world came to be. So you may have noticed in the story of Jumping Mouse that something did come into existence, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So again, a reminder of the characteristics that we are looking for in this legend. A realistic setting from long ago, definitely very important. A hero with positive characteristics. Problem that the hero has to solve, sometimes caused by an anti-hero. Truth about a real thing or place. Elements of cultural life. Mystical elements and hyperbole, which just means exaggeration. Solution created by the hero. And finally, a lesson that is learned by the characters. So let's take a closer look at the story of Jumping Mouse. So where do we see these characteristics? Well, is there a realistic setting? Yes, there is. Um, all of the places that are mentioned are real places that you would find on our planet. So it, it talks about how the mouse lives in the brush by the river. We have rivers on our planet. It talks about him going through the desert, the plains, the mountains, all the way to the far off land. Even the pictures and description of the far off land with lots of water, waterfalls, trees, plants, that's all stuff that we see on our planet. So that's a very believable setting um, that this would be somewhere even in North America we have all of these the desert the plains the mountains all of those things exist so it's very possible that this uh, realistic setting took place in North America this is actually a Native American um, story or legend I should say and so we're gonna see a lot of those uh, sort of settings pop through from Native American culture uh, also, who is our hero? The hero in this story is Jumping Mouse. And if you remember, the hero is supposed to have positive characteristics. So try and think, what are some positive characteristics that Jumping Mouse has? Well, we know he's brave because he's going out you know, all on his own to try and find the far off land. We know he's adventurous because he's kind of just going out there no matter what. He's going to reach his goals no matter what. He's facing all these um, struggles and obstacles to try and reach his goals. We also know he's generous because he gives up his eyesight and his sense of smell to other animals who were in need. And finally, we know he was hopeful. It was that hope that was alive inside him that allowed him to reach it to the reach the far off land in the first place. What was the problem that he had to solve? Well, it wasn't a traditional sort of problem. It was that he had to find a way to the far off land, even though it was really difficult. So he encountered a lot of obstacles. Um, remember the shadow in the sky or the shadows in the sky was talking about those birds that were obviously birds of prey, meaning something like a hawk or an eagle that would probably eat a mouse. That was definitely part of his struggle that made it so difficult. And that's why the animals in the story provided him protection. So he would walk underneath the bison. He would walk underneath the wolf so that the birds of prey didn't find him as he was traveling across the plains and the mountains. Was there a truth about a real thing? Yeah, the actual thing that was created in this creation legend was the eagle. So according to this legend, one would believe that the eagle did not yet exist in time until Jumping Mouse was turned into the first eagle. So this creation legend is focused on the creation of the creature that we know today as the eagle or the bald eagle. This is yet another reason why you would assume that this legend takes place in North America because the bald eagle is a native uh, animal to North America. Let's look at some more characteristics in this story. So what aspects of cultural life are there? Well, we know this is a Native American story, like I said, and the biggest thing that really shines through in this legend is probably the Native Americans' appreciation for all creatures. The fact that there are so many different kinds of creatures, predators, prey, herbivores, carnivores, in this story, all painted in a different way with different personalities, kind of shows um, a common theme that you're going to see in Native American stories, which is 
kind of personifying or giving human feelings and human uh, features to these animals, even making them talk and talk like normal people would. So that's something that's a common theme and definitely part of Native American cultural life. Are there any mystical elements or magical elements? Definitely. The talking animals, for one, is definitely something magical that you don't see in real life. So that's pretty much item number one for mystical elements. Uh, also, the fact that you've got a magic frog who's giving people, you know, special abilities and turning a mouse into an eagle, that also would be considered a mystical element. Um, even the mouse being able to give his eyesight away, giving his sense of smell away, that's definitely magic that's in this story. What was the solution in this story? Well, Jumping Mouse gives up his sight and his smell to help others and is rewarded by reaching the far-off land and becoming a strong and majestic eagle. It's only when he becomes the eagle is that he's really able to enjoy being in the far-off land and see it himself and smell it himself. And so what's the lesson learned after all this? Well, always keep hope alive within you and be generous because honestly if he had not kept the hope alive within him he would have never made it across the plains and across the mountains and also if he hadn't given away his sight and his smell to help others he would have never been um turned into an eagle by magic frog in the end so all of those things kind of led him to the spot where he ended up in the very end so what are you going to do now well, you're going to keep watching my videos because in these videos we will explore a few more legends. You can get more accustomed to how they work and what they look like. We're going to find those characteristics of legends within all of these legends that you're going to be watching or reading. And then we're going to be thinking more about our own ideas for how to make a creation legend because at the end of this boys and girls that's what you're going to do. You're going to be making your own creation legend. So get those creative juices working. Start thinking about the commonalities or similarities that you see between all of these legends and maybe get some ideas for what you want to be the focus of your creation legend. But don't worry about planning that out yet or writing anything yet. Um, at the end of this week, I'm going to ask you guys to take a brief study island quiz um, on all of these legends just to check in and make sure you're understanding how these characteristics all kind of come together to make similarities. And then next week, we'll worry about starting to plan our actual legends. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.